All right, here we are with Chris Cleary from the Department of the Navy. Chris, this is my first Hack the Machine. I'm real excited to be here. I know this is your first Hack the Machine as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do and what you think of Hack the Machine so far. Yeah, so uh, Terry, again, thanks yeah. for having me here. I appreciate it. Uh, also my first Hack the Machine, although I've been tracking it for a while. I I've been familiar of Hack the Machine probably since its inception. I uh, have tried to get involved to one degree or another, but either uh, whatever job I was in at the time or position I was in just didn't support getting out here. So now uh, as the principal cyber advisor, which is a, a relatively new position within the department, it's only been here about a year. Uh, my job is really to sort of uh, advise the secretary, uh, the chief of naval operations and the commandant of the Marine Corps on all things cyber. Uh, the focus, it seems, if there's, there's sort of three fundamental areas uh, when you look at it, and we've, we've coined our own little catchphrase as uh, secure, survive, and strike. So when we talk about security, we're really focusing on sort of enterprise systems and you know, risk management framework and ATO. But then you get into survivability. And survivability is really all the things that Hack the Machine focus on, you know, critical infrastructure, weapon systems, uh, to ensure that the things that we're making are, are resilient and survivable, you know, can fight through attacks uh, to be able to do their mission. And then you, you move over to kind of, you know, once you get beyond, uh, you know, security, survivability, then you get into strike, right? So then the next phase of, of what we're finding in sort of the unkinetic uh, warfare space is the ability to deliver effects against our adversaries and the way we're going to build our teams to go do that. Um, so that's kind of my focus areas as the PCA. And again, I'm really excited to be doing the hack machine stuff to see how this plays out. Yeah, awesome. Cyber's definitely a, a growing part of our military. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the warfare impacts that what you do is going to yeah, have on I, our military. I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a broken record on this <laughs> as, I, as I've been getting into this job. And it's funny, um, uh, cyber in some instances is still a religion, sure. right? There's a, there's a belief system for the people who are in it, the people that are going to do hack the machine, the people, that are, the people that grew up in the security world, the people that build technology, you know, they get it. Um, but it's so new that the, that the people that have dependencies on this system that just assume they're always there. They don't fully fundamentally understand uh, how cyber has been completely interwoven into their lives. Of course, you know, we see it through social media and the, the solar winds attack and the, the, the pipeline attack. Right. So we, we observe it, but I don't think that we're fully embracing the impact this can have. And I think that our adversaries uh, are doing a really, really good job of embracing this new means and methods of warfare. And I really do kind of go down the means and methods of warfare. Uh, part of my religion, part of my ethos says that this is a warfare domain. This is the way we're gonna fight our adversaries. This is the way our adversaries want to fight us. Uh, you know, the Navy, the US Navy is the most powerful Navy in the world. Right. There's just no question about it. Yeah, the Chinese might have, might have uh, tipped over the fence with a few more platforms. Uh, but there's no question that the U.S. Navy is, is, is the preeminent naval power and has been for arguably 100 years. Uh, and our adversaries know that. So I believe that they're trying to change the battle space into the way that, you know, I don't want to fight you the way you want to fight me. Right. I'm going to fight you the way I want to fight you uh, because I'm not going to fight you at sea. Uh, I, I'm not going to survive that engagement. U.S. Navy, you've been doing it. You've been operating at sea for, you know, decades. Uh, and you've just continued to grow your Navy and, and, and make it more and more powerful since the end of World War II. Uh, and, and everybody's been in our dust looking at it. Okay, so I'm going to change the way I want to engage you. And I think the services are doing a good job embracing cyber to some degree, uh, but it's still not a core fundamental warfare discipline within each of the services. And that's one of the things as the PCAs, and again, I, I work with the other service PCAs, and try to get this idea of, a, of, of it's got to be a, a core mission set just like undersea warfare, surface warfare, air warfare, naval special warfare. Um, it just has to be seen through the lens of those other warfare disciplines, uh, again, because our adversaries are getting good at it. Right, so it's like we, we see cyber, the, the people that work in it, we see it as like everything needs to be built on that foundation of cyber. So what are we doing to convince the people that don't see it that way to look at it from that yeah, angle. And I have a great analogy that, that plays into this, as I would say, uh, you know, we're getting better from our acquisition community. You know, if you look at the way we're building our new uh, Constellation class frigate, cyber survivability is a key fundamental component of that platform moving right. forward, which is super encouraging, Yeah. right? Um, Project Overmatch, you know, Admiral Small said, hey, come and break my stuff. Tell me where I got to fix it. Hack the machine, the things you guys are looking yeah. at. So it's coming, right? I mean, we're getting there. We acknowledge that this is something that we have to be prepared uh, to, to defend. Um, but, you know, 20 years ago, 
Uh, I, and I use building a house as an analogy. If anybody's bought a new home recently, I imagine that when you were the builder, they didn't ask you if you wanted the, the uh, uh, heating and air conditioning package. Right. Or did you want the electricity package or the plumbing package? It's, no, this is how houses are built today, yeah, exactly. right? Running water, central air, electricity. You know, now we even you see more technology built into it. Roofs with, that are solar panels, yep. right? And, and we're going to see, you know, 20 years from now, it's not going to be, I want to add solar to my house. It's probably the way a roof is going to be built. It's going to be built with solar cells. We are seeing that, that fundamental shift now for the way that we're going to build systems of the future. Fantastic. Um, but because a ship has a pretty long shelf life, and some of these ships that still have many, many years of service in them were built before cyber survivability was a key attribute of the way that we were going to design that ship. So, you know, we're in this kind of period of when we identify certain vulnerabilities and things, yeah, we're going to have to figure out how to go back uh, and install uh, some sort of protection, you know, perimeter defense, or we're going to replace a piece of equipment, or we're going to do, get better at patching, or whatever that is. Yeah, and, but 20 years from now, we're going to laugh when we say, oh my God, I can't remember, you know, 20 years when we had to go back fit security onto a ship. Right. It's going to be like, well, we build ships with fire suppression systems, you know, duh. Now we build them with cyber Now we just build them with yeah. cyber protection. It's just going to be a key attribute of that platform moving forward. But based on the religion side of it, I still don't think some of our leaders fully appreciate the effects that can be delivered against our components. Bring it all the way back to hack the machine. Right. I mean, this is why this exists. This is why we can demonstrate why you guys are demonstrating. Hey, there are key vulnerabilities in your systems. Right. There are things that you better be a, a, aware of and attuned to because um, the adversary is focusing on figuring out how to how to engage that. Right. Exactly. Well, Chris, thanks for uh, no. for chatting with me. I hope you enjoy your time at Hack the Machine. Yeah, and, thank you very much. And we'll send it back to to you in the studio.